all your blood. Would you believe it? I remember a fellow there, George McKinney's or whatever it is. And he said to me, I think I know where are, there are some lots in Independence City. They're not being offered. He said, oh, he said we, maybe some metal and company. And so he got me interested. And so we were able to purchase those two lots. Mm. For the grand sum of $18,000. <laughs> so were, were they side-by-side -side lots? Yes, yes. In fact, it was part of five lots. Maybe we should strain ourselves a little more to acquire more than two. But so it is. So that's what we had at the time. In fact, I, we had to get um, a loan. Right. Because we didn't have that type of money. I'll do it up here. Yeah. In retrospect. In retrospect. <laughs> and so that's how we got off the ground. So I've been, been there for a time. In fact, no, tell the truth. That Lincoln Airport, the membership over time was built up to close to 100 in the carport and they said to us no you know we can't continue anymore you know we have to look a place that we can grow and expand and so that was when this thing came up and um, we, we as I said put together the funds to start building now that's another interesting thing brother Jim one of my schoolmates from um, Kingston Tech, um, Clarence Wallace, of pleasant memories gone now, had said to me, I had gone to Brother Baker who had done a drawing, and um, I told him what we had in mind, but he said, my brother, you can't afford this. I said, listen, I know a man, a man named Hyde, stop, stop for Hyde. And um, he operated from Lady of Avenue. Right. He said, you know, I think this man can be a help to you. So we went together, uh, Stafford and another, named Carl Bellamy. And they said, no, look, we will change the structure. We will essentially put steel instead of straight concrete beam. So we put steel and then you can encase the steel. And so that fella gave me a loan, I believe it was $120,000. Jim, the man gave me a loan only on his signature and my signature. Wow. We didn't even have a witness. It's amazing. And no security or anything? No security. And so he started, he said, he got me. That's one. Secondly, um, Lawrence Passard, a friend of all, Harry Passard, yeah. Harry, Harry's Harry. brother. He saw me, he came and said, Brother Mal, I know how this thing goes, right? You have a problem. You have to start and then you have to finish. He said, I can reduce your problem, you know. I can give you a start. Then you are all about to start again. You love to think about the finish. <laughs> That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And so he got in battle, got the foundation dug, and over time we paid him as as we could afford right, and, right. And, and, and you weren't on a pressure yeah, to be the building took shape in fact if i fast forward when that building i think it, it was 86 that we, we, we moved in when it was finished but i was in trepidation because while i was able to pay his workmen his payment for supervision and management the whole project i was in great trepidation what is this man going to ask and who are we going to pay? And I must tell you that when we opened that building, just when we were, it was partial, but we decided to dedicate yeah. the smaller yeah. area. When we conclude, and I said to Lawrence, well, Lawrence, tell me the damage. And he said to me, Brother Mal, that's my gift to you. Wow. Yeah, I tell you about America, you wouldn't believe it. So that's how it started, but then of course, Virgin the keynote, too, too key to teach our persons stewardship. We never learned that from the church. Mm -hmm. Some of the missionary, that was never even right. mentioned. Right. And two, we had a group of young people. 
young, bright people. And so we grew up with them. In fact, my recollection is that at the start we have two adults, myself and a chap named Glenn Wilby was coming out of Kingston, um, Casey. A little later on we had the Ramsaran family joining us, um, but very few in the way of adults. So it was a case where we had to build from nothing up. Along the way, of course, uh, Brother Walker decided that he probably should you know, confine his effort to, to, to your turn. So he went up to your turn and we, But all through, the, 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 we had help from God provided you wouldn't believe it. For instance, where we are now, it is zoned for commercial use. So there was a big struggle with town planning whether we were going to get the approval to the church building there. Again, fortunately, one of my schoolmates, he happened to be in town planning. <laughs> but, and so he assisted us in getting the approval. Mm. They, they, um, the condition was no, ever listen, it is zoned for commercial. If a person chooses to build a bar beside you, yeah. you cannot object. You can't complain. <laughs> you cannot complain and you cannot object. I said, we'll take it, right? <laughs> yeah, but like, get, the, get the rest of it worked yeah, out. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, let me ask you, and you know, like this might cause you to dig in and um, leave out some favorite people, but who are like some of your role models? And like maybe name three people in ministry or out who you know um these are the people you admire the most that has aided your work as a minister well i think very early we had a job in my early years a fellow named frank bent you heard that in um, church of the first born he, he was in Bali, my early sunday school hmm. I did mention, of course, that Shola named Calvert Carris, the one who started St. Stephen. Mm -hmm. For a short while, I went to Congregational, the part of United Church on uh, North Street, Princess Street. Mm -hmm. They used to have a, 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 a primary school there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what they call a junior school, because when you graduate, you go up to senior school. And he, you know, have a serious impact. And, of course, some of the persons involved, a fellow named Walters, in the Adventist, and then of course um, the, the fellow the, the missionary called Grace named Simon. Um, as far as how he influenced me really was discipline, mm -hmm. timekeeping, honoring your word. You know, he made some very very serious um, impact on my life where that is concerned. His word and his bond. In mm -hmm. fact, if you visit him. And you promise that you're going to be there for two hours. And that's the expectation. No, no, no. He tell you it's time. You don't know. They all do that. This inside us is you say you'll be here for two hours. It's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so what about preaching style? Is is there anybody that you pattern your style? Because I remember, um, I remember you doing like Vesper at camp, and yes. you know there there was just something about your style that I liked. Um, I mean, I'm not tempted to model it in any way because, yeah. you know, you're one and only. But who, who did you All right. like, um, look at or look to emulate in your preaching style? Put it this way, Brajim. I don't know that there, there are a number of persons. But I used to be a person who visited and here at Keswick Convention. Right. They used to have some first class, a lot of Englishmen come here. Yeah. J. Sidlow, Baxter, um, Steve Alford, a tremendous number of, yeah. of these persons. Even Billy Graham has been yeah. to a couple of Keswick Conventions. Keswick Convention, you know, they, 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 they used to bring up some tremendous uh, preachers, a guy named James Earl Massey, um, where he comes from, he's an American who associated with the Church of God. And DC made really very serious impact. So
So I can't say there's any, it's probably a combination. Right, 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 right. So you develop your own, yeah, yeah. Your own yeah. style, Indeed, observing yeah. a number of people. Yes, very much so. so let's talk then a little about the Churches of Christ um, in Jamaica, mm -hmm. as you understand um, the history. What have been the church's biggest success in your judgment? The biggest success yeah. is to, to me, and the thing that I admire, is to put New Testament Christianity front and center, where you don't have to be a denomination. Um, you can be the church, plain and simple, following biblical um, principle. Mm -hmm. This was quite, to me, quite new and different. And you were encouraged to study the Word of God for yourself. There's something you didn't understand or you disagreed with. You felt free to go to your leader and say, we want to discuss this with you. It's not sort of like that, you know, it's cut and dry. This is, this is domination policy. Right. Or the bishop said, that that's the end of it. We were encouraged, you know, to, to research and to discuss. Study and, and to, to yes. have conversations. Yes, indeed. What are some of the big challenges you think that the churches of Christ in Jamaica is facing today? All right, well, before we even go what they're facing today, what the, the churches of Christ are uh, um, in their history, well, they are decided somehow that they wouldn't have central support. In other words, the support don't go to some central body right. who is responsible for sending some people to Jamaica and who would be for whom they were responsible. The people that came here came supported by congregation, one or more congregation. So that's number one. Number two, all persons were never taught to give. Number three, the, the foundation for, like they said to say, the, the, the Bible school. It was set up in a way that had really no future to it. All that happened is that the mission decided to go back and, and that's it the end of it. That's the end of it. It had, you know. So these are some of the, and, and then they started churches basically in rural areas. Because apparently, how they got the support is the types of report they can send back, mm. right? More rural, How many baptized, baptized, and you know, and then of course the rural people have their own way of doing things, and that's how you probably hear the word, them said them have a missionary. That's the, that's the day when the missionary would come. Then when he returned, people went back to the way they were doing, doing their own thing. I'm doing things. So, the truth is, Jim, it didn't have a future in it, mm -hmm. right? In other words, I say, what must have happened to these people? Must they say, they say no. so when we are gone, what is going to happen? Mm -hmm. The churches are essentially in rural areas, and the, 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 the template I use is like, for instance, the brethren. They had strong urban churches. Right, and they can go out Maranatha, from the urban center. Galilee, Bethany, healing, right? Then no. They can they can support we had some very weak churches you know and uh, in fact and also the effort to get people to go out to the united states to study and return when you look at that was a dismal feeling because people like one person said to me come back to what when you come back right. who take up your support you have gone to the united states you get used to a style sure, and nice standard style. of living, then when you come back, there's really nothing. So you are really depending, your lifeline really is depending on the, the support you get. So in the local church now, look what happened now. Your minister who is there now, right? The person who is reporting to, and the person to whom is accountable is the person abroad. The local church have very little, in fact, some people think it was a gift that they didn't have to give. Right. And it, it, it was it so so there 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 was nothing futuristic in it. You know I, mean? I don't know what people imagine. So why they can't say so when we're gone, what is going to happen? 
So are we in a better place? To, I'm sure we are, but are we positioned to thrive and survive where we are with the churches today? To me, I'm just beginning to see that we have put a structure in place to talk about we have a charter of cooperation for the first time. Right. Because how we relate to each other, it was just left. In fact, the fact that a person have a tag out their church, I said, well, one of us. But, but that's the, there was nothing to it. There was nothing to say how I'm responsible for you and how you are responsible for me. Nothing is written in any place. No structure. Everybody that you could look to. Yeah, no structure you could look to. And everybody talk about this thing called autonomy. But autonomy, you take talk to ten people and yeah, they ten get different ten meanings. different meaning as to what, what autonomy So means. since you raised that, what's your take or position on autonomy? And tell me where it works and where it doesn't. I have not seen it for any place. And when I say So that, it's a misnomer. Yeah, it's a misnomer. I've been to the Caribbean, I've been to Australia, I've been to to, to the USA. United Kingdom. I've seen it work nowhere. Nowhere it has worked. Okay. That 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 kind of take care of that. Um what would you regard as your greatest accomplishment as a minister? I mean, I don't want you to think as broad as you want. Just like the one accomplishment you look back and you can talk about it every time with with a lot of pride. Well, I don't talk about it, but <laughs> it's the fact that we came from really nothing. When I got to when I got to Portmore, we had six members. Only one was new. They were from other other churches. Some, yeah, from churches. Yes, six members. And a garage. <laughs> and yes, and a carport. When I left, we have close to 300 members. The church is self-supporting. And you have a structure. We were debt free. Mm. And the church was able to offer me a pension. And they are able to look after. My son is doing full time service now. We are able to. We have a. We have a, a um, administrator. We pay a, a caretaker full time. So you have a structure in place. Yes. You have a structure in place. Yeah. What's your biggest disappointment? As I said earlier on, it's the fact that there was no template for how the church was to go forward in the future. You know, you have a person who is a, who is a, who is a minister and some members and well, that's, that's it. And the inter, our intra-church relationship mm. was not established. We had two events there. You might have a rally or you might have, well, what evolved to be a convention. Mm -hmm. You with me? But how relate, as I said time ago, what all I responsible for you? So what really happened in that case, you know, Jim, that I'm at Portmore. At any time, I could have been taken by any denomination. They could have just right, made right. an offer to me that I could refuse. Right. There would be no... You, you could know, just start uh, teaching uh, strange doctrine. Uh, and exactly. You know, there's not a person to whom you are accountable. So, so that, that is the, that to me is, is, is the serious weakness. Serious so weakness. who are some of the stalwarts that you have worked with in the church? Not just male ministers, but but men, women, um, stalwarts, foreign and local. Like, yeah. that you can call names and say, these are some of the people that have carried this work forward. Well, one of the persons that have influenced my life, and you know, to Doris Blackwell, right? When I was a youngster, I remember, clearly I've said I went to stay. Uh, Doris asked me to come and spend... That's up in Beachertown? Beachertown, yes. Mm -hmm. I think I spent a week or maybe two weeks with her. And when I left Doris Blackwell home, it was very clear to me mm. that I, she convinced me that, that, that I had leadership potential and she expected in the future mm. I would be a leader. So oh, she, she, she challenged you. She challenged me. I've already mentioned people like Grace Nensine, mm -hmm. you know, people like Pastor Mullings, and I influence people like um, um, Albert Thompson, Thompson, people like um, Vincent Graham, they, they had um, some influence on mm -hmm. me. And strangely, the one in the person, his style and his manner, um, 
people like Salomon Levy. Now, again, um, just by yeah, that's just in restricted to that, mm. his style and his manner of delivery, right? Mm. You know, again, they, they, they left the church, you know, without establishing having a, a structure that was sustainable. So those are like some of the people that comes those to mind. Are people that comes to mind. So, but that, of course, other people in other right but we call them also influence. Um, you are, you know, and um, pardon me saying it, but like you're in the twilight of your years, um, and in in you're still active in ministry. Yeah. But you know, like you're not. Um, like gung ho, like you were, like you, you have to slow down of necessity. Yes. Um, what's urgent for you as you see, like your time, like running out? What you just need to get done? All right. I see eighty-one because I'm now eighty-one. One thing I want to see um, is that I would want us to have the, the development. Are the concerns with property? Mm -hmm. We are now well in the state. We're waiting now to get the um, the work done. We can have a, an office that will serve both. Well, and I mentioned before the um, Jamaica Christian Boys and we know that anymore, right. and also the Church of Christ in Jamaica. We want to, um, as I say, have a visitors lodge there. So. Or young people can look at pride at something and say, this is ours, this is ours. not just my little thing, right. this is ours. Also, I look forward to having our own camp facilities. And also, I look forward to the structure for training young leaders, particularly pastors, you know, that we can, we can undertake finance your training. Yes. Mm. That's what I look forward to. So speaking of pastors, your son Peter has followed in your footstep. Like off camera, we, we talked about the the three areas that he had like he he could see you function. Mm -hmm. Um the, the, what do you think convinced Peter to follow in your footsteps? As I said, I, I try to be transparent right he can he can i i did not impress upon him the fact that he ought to be right i try to live a life of example and he begin to see where the church is in my thinking and in my operation he has a mother who if something if it means some she get a new dress and there's something for the church the church would come first so he know where our heart, our mm. heart is. And not only did he know our heart is, he saw, oh God has blessed us mm. tremendously, you know, over the years. And as I said earlier, we left the church with a vibrant congregation, a day three, in fact, they are thinking of building now. Mm -hmm. We have, um, in fact, a gym. I don't know, by the way, what we have set up over there, Jimmy, is unlike what people, we have <coughs> annually what we call an offering commitment. We have people to commit themselves. Mm -hmm. Because in the church, people talk about a budget, and I don't know how you can put forward a budget only at the expenditure. <laughs> <What they intend laughs> no income yeah. plan. So we have said to people, 